What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be talking about the first things you need as a filmmaker slash director. Uh, basically going into 2018 discussing a couple of the breakdowns or just discussing an overall breakdown of how I would actually begin your video production journey and kind of just giving an insight into what I know works best basically because it's essentially what I did to actually get to the point where I am now. So I am genuinely just giving you uh, personal information that has helped me along the way. If you guys haven't subscribed already, my name is Jack. I upload video production slash video editing themed videos all throughout the week. I try to upload every single day, tackling a new topic based around video production and video editing. Either a tutorial style video uh, helping you to get better or a, a, a video actually helping you and pushing you in the way of making money doing this which I'm sure is uh, very beneficial without further ado let's jump into the video now first things you are gonna need as a filmmaker this is very interesting um, first off we're gonna go in with the most obvious one but uh, it definitely needs to be said is a camera I know that that seems a little bit general but hear me out here it, not only a camera but uh, the right camera when you're starting off you might not even have the biggest budget in the entire world. Don't worry, that's absolutely not a problem at all. The first camera you should get just needs to be of uh, kind of good quality, right? So it doesn't have to be the highest range camera on the shelf. It doesn't have to be a red camera or something crazy like that. I would suggest going for um, the Canons, uh, kind of like a lower Canon model, maybe the Canon Rebel series, or personally the first camera I started shooting on um, which wasn't even mine, it was my friend's, was the Canon uh, 600D. These cameras, either the Canon Rebel series or the Canon uh, 600D, maybe the 400D, something like that, um, could be really, really good for beginner camera. Not really gonna come in at too much money at all. Maybe like 300 pounds, if even at this point, which 300 pounds, I'd say that's about $500. With your first camera, the max I would spend is about one and a half grand, um, and I'm talking maybe dollars, so if you're in the UK, maybe the max you should spend is maybe 1.2 thousand or something like that. The reason I say this is because this is your first camera. Like, you are guaranteed to buy more and more cameras, especially if this is something you're really passionate about and you're getting into. You wanna get something at first that's really gonna be a good starter kit for you, okay? So I would suggest the Canon Rebel series, maybe the Canon 600D. Personally, um, I actually have the, uh, the Sony a6300, which is an extremely good camera. That would be maybe a little higher on the, uh, the, uh, on the budget for you, or even the uh, GH5. The Sony GH5 would probably be the max of, uh, of cameras I would get for your first camera. That is an extremely good camera, especially if you go and upgrade the lens and everything like that going forward. But overall, if you are trying to look for a little budget kind of camera almost to start you off, it's still gonna be good. Go with those, uh, with, the, with those Canons, I believe. And that leads me on to my next point because you can actually get away with going with, for example, a cheaper Canon camera like the Rebel series or even the, uh, the 600D, which the kit lens is okay, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing special. In daytime, obviously, it looks great. However, it doesn't really process darkness the best, so you're gonna get huge amounts of grain if you're filming in the dark which for me, I shoot clubs, so that's a huge part of what I do, which is why we had to upgrade. But the next thing I would suggest you guys is to buy a 50 millimeter lens. And like I said, especially buy this 50 millimeter lens if you're actually going with, for example, like the Rebel series or the, uh, or, or, or the Canon 600D or something like that. And the reason I say that is because the 50 millimeter lens is by far the nicest quality lens you can actually get for these cameras. Um, and overall, that's just gonna make your production value go through the roof. I'll show on screen right now a music video I shot uh, maybe even a year ago now, or like at least like eight months ago or something for a, a, a rap around my area, right? And I shot this on the Sony Ace, uh, no, no, it's my bad. I shot this on the Canon 600D with the 50 millimeter lens. Yes, the 50 millimeter lens. And uh, as you see, it's extremely good quality, especially turning the, uh, the Canon, which is a camera that's not worth much money, that really isn't the best camera in the world, into an extremely, um, uh, it basically turns the quality into a competitor for the other kind of uh, higher up cameras on the list that I, that I can maybe talk about. But that 50 millimeter lens honestly is gonna add an extreme boost to your quality. And uh, the only thing about the 50 millimeter is uh, you will definitely need some sort of stabilizer of some sort, which brings me on to my next point, which is get a stabilizer of some sort, right? Any, any kind really. And the, depending on what your actual type of video production is, that to me at least is gonna dictate what you get. For example, um, a shoulder rig, 
that's the type of stabilizer in a sense, right? In, in the sense that it literally does just make it stable, make it a little stiller. A shoulder rig is something you would get maybe if you're going for uh, less moving shots, things like that. The, the, uh, the shoulder rig is great if you're covering an event. For example, I've used a shoulder rig many times where I just have to be stood somewhere, right? filming uh, an artist or, or filming whatever, whoever's performing at this club, and I need to be stood there holding an, a, an essentially a, a very still frame for a long period of time. For example, I filmed Future, that's a big rapper. I had to film him um, for maybe like, I don't know, a long period of time basically just stood on the stage, aiming the camera at him so I could capture his, uh, his entire set or whatever, right? So for that, a, uh, a shoulder rig was uh, essential pretty much. Um, then if you're, if you're making kind of music videos, things like that, even wed wedding videos, and you want a really smooth moving shot, I would suggest going over to maybe glide cam or, or, or maybe if you can't afford a glide cam, going with a cheaper stabilizer. But overall, if you are shooting more moving shots, more motion to your, to your edits, more motion to your productions, you're gonna want an actual stabilizer um, in, in the real essence of the word, not just a shoulder rig. But both of these, in my mind, are under kind of the category of stabilization and making your shots a little bit more smooth and fluid. But that's a decision you have to make based on your type of video production. And finally on the list, the, uh, the overall big, big tip, and this is about how your brand is perceived, right? This is a huge tip in starting out as a filmmaker and the things that really contribute to the people who get a lot of work versus the people who don't. Branding is essential. You might not even think it, you might wanna be a true creative um, and, and kind of just believe that your work will speak for itself. That's true in a sense if your work is absolutely amazing where you see it and you're like, wow, I have to have a video from this person. Unfortunately, that's probably not the case um, for most people or definitely not the case for most people at the start of their production. So something that can help you uh, to get more money, to get more bookings consistently. And uh, the only reason I say that is because it has massively helped me and how my brand has been perceived is branding. I'm talking about social media. I'm talking about your logo. I'm talking about uh, business cards. I'm talking about everything like that. For example, I run this channel here. It's Jack Cole, right? This is all about, uh, you know, video production, stuff like that. But my actual brand um, and my actual production company is called TQ9 TV. So we have a Facebook page with about nearly 2,000 likes now over there. Go over, like it if you want, to be fair, right? Um, but we have a page there that already has some sort of brand reputation. Instantly, when you come to this page, you see it has a reputable amount of likes, meaning we are, uh, you know, we have a foundation. People know about us in our area. Um, and overall, the logo is really nice. Uh, when you come to our Facebook page, a, uh, a, a kind of clip starts playing in the top as, as the banner. We have a video as the banner, which is some of our really nice footage, right? Including uh, Future, who's a massive rapper who we filmed. That's kind of like a little accolade as well. Then we have a nice website that's laid out super nice. We also have business cards. And uh, basically everything is put together around this name, uh, this brand name TQ9. Now TQ9 is, is not just made up. TQ9 is basically my postcode, you know what I mean? So if you're in America, that's your zip code or whatever. It's just a cool little way of kind of like, I guess, repping our area or whatever, but essentially it was just kind of like a cool three letter word that we could use and uh, this is where we're located, you know, whatever. This is gonna be our brand name and we made it nice and gold so it stands out. Overall branding is a huge part of how you're perceived. It's actually crazy. I've seen people and also I speak for myself, right? I'll actually speak for myself, uh, <laughs> which is pretty funny because I'm gonna use myself as an example of someone who maybe isn't even as talented as other people in my area producing content, right? Which I definitely think now I am, but when I started out creating content, I honestly think that the quality of my work may not have even been to a level uh, that maybe other people's was. However, this brand name of TQ9 and uh, the, the way our brand is perceived and overall um, the, the kind of perceived size of our brand and everything like that and just the, the, the cleanness of it, and all these things are a factor in how people perceive you, right? And perception is everything because people might perceive you as an amazing editor who's, who's who's you know, gonna nail the project every time and, and who has this, this, this Facebook page and this website and all this stuff that looks super professional. And there might be somebody next to me, right, who doesn't have any of the social media stuff, who doesn't have any nice branding, any business cards, anything that really adds to the scale of their um, production or the scale of how they're perceived at least. And they could be better at creating videos than me. However, the client might go with me 
simply because uh, the branding and everything looks much bigger. Therefore, the perception is we are bigger and better than this person over here who doesn't necessarily have all this. So I would 100% suggest working on a brand and uh, overall just um, making everything look nice, clean, get yourself some business cards. That in itself, just um, you know, having business cards is, I think to me, essential. Like, I can't even believe how many clients we missed out on, me and my business partner I'm talking about, um, when we didn't have, have cards. Constantly, people would always come up to us at the club, hey, um, asking us, uh, can, can you come film my event? Or uh, can you come, blah, 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 whatever the deal may be. Um, or you know, coming up to us asking us for other type of videos, like do you also do music videos? All this stuff, and there was a huge period of like six, seven, eight months where we just didn't even have business cards, meaning that we have, as a result of that, potentially missed out on a lot of money we could have made. Now we have business cards. If anybody asks us anything, we give them two, you know what I mean? We, we make sure that they know what's up, know where to contact us, everything like that. But overall, just a couple points to think about in terms of the first things you need to know as a filmmaker and uh, kind of just getting into this world. I'm the Jack Riss, Jack Cole. Subscribe for more video production, video editing themed videos. Have a nice day and goodbye.